did a small break, actually it's right here, because I want to show you that energy loss is one thing and the friction factor is another thing. What we've seen in the last sessions or lectures is just the friction factor. All those equations, the Moody's diagram and so on, talks about only the friction factor. What we're going to cover right now is the energy loss due to pipe or the wall's friction. Okay, And of course we're going to take into consideration this factor of friction. We didn't study this just for fun, we, we are going to use it here, especially on the wall friction. So, once we know the type of flow, for example, laminar transient, which should be avoided, and turbulent, we will be able to calculate the friction factor, and then we will be able to continue with our calculations and do the energy loss due to friction, which is joules per kilogram. And as you recall, the factor or the friction factor has no units at all. It's dimensionless. And as you can see, we have some dimensions here. So probably you're wondering how we're going to get that. Well, it's this famous equation which I want you guys to learn is the formula to get the energy loss due to wall friction, which is you can see the typical units we are working with the mechanical energy equation which is exactly as joules per kilogram and well this is dimensionless this is length or how long is the pipe and this is diameter so meter with meter will cancel so this is dimensionless and as you can see we only have velocity to the square which is meters per second to the square power which is exactly this right here and you can convert it to joules per kilogram with your respective units. So, um, we will need to find out first the friction factor right here. We will, of course, need to know how long is the pipe. It will be kind of silly to ask you how much friction is being lost if you don't know the size of the pipe. And, of course, the diameter. It's also important. You can see as the diameter increases, you will probably think that this decreases, but actually as the diameter increases, you also lower the uh, velocity. So actually the velocity head is the only one which matters to us. So if you decrease the density, uh, the diameter, you will increase the velocity, which will increase the friction loss. So in general, guys, if you ask me of all these, what's the strongest or more important concept is this velocity to the square. Okay. Recall that the friction factor goes from well from zero, which is very not common, to zero point zero four normally. Applications on turbulence. Of course you could have a little bit more in laminar flow and so on, but this is the typical values we're going to work with. Actually I will say it this number right here, point zero from point zero twenty to point zero four. Note, as L increases, I told you before, you're going to have more friction loss. And let me talk to you a little bit on the nomenclature we use in fluid mechanics and dynamics. It's about HF. HF, or you could use lowercase, means essentially the total friction, okay? And it's, me uh, sorry, it's measured with how many joules you are losing per kilogram flow. So this is splits into two, of course. We're going to have friction due to pipe wall, which is the one we are analyzing right now. And we're going to have friction due to fittings and valves. This is section number three. So we're going to see that. We are right now in section number two, so we are studying pipe wall friction. We're going to see how to calculate HFF. Many times we're not going to have fittings of valves, so the total friction will be the only friction of the pipe wall, which is right here. Okay, And many other books, for example, the Applied Fluid Mechanics book of Robert Mott uses this concept, which is the friction, but not per unit uh, joules per kilogram, but just meter. Recall that to transform this 
any per unit mass to length, you just need to divide by gravity. So it's very, let's say, common to use it because you can directly understand how much friction you're losing. For example, if I tell you there's a loss of 5 meter in friction, well, that, this means that if you would not have that friction loss, you will be able to increase 5 meter the tank and still operate and so on. Uh, it's also very common when we are searching for a pump, they will always, almost always use uh, the friction loss in meters or length. If you're using the English system, you will be using feet normally. And they also use this crazy notation, which denotes that there is, of course, uh, it's not only meter, but for example, pounds up and pounds down will mathematically cancel each other. But we use this notation in order to let you know that we divided this, let's say, friction head by gravity in order to get feet or meter length uh, units, which are the units of length. Okay. So whatever I tell you, if I give you, I have friction loss of five meter. You should know that if you multiply it by gravity, you will get the joules per kilogram you're losing. And backwards, if I tell you I'm losing 10 joules per kilogram divided by gravity, that's about one meter of length, okay? Here we go, once again, this is kilogram, joules per kilogram, and this is equivalent to having meters to the second power divided by second to the second power. And HL units is kilogram and kilogram will eventually cancel. So I can show you this notation where I can go directly and tell you I have 10 meters of loss in friction. Okay. So for example, if I were to tell you I got 98 joules per kilogram, then if you wanted to show me how many meters is that, you will need to divide HF by gravity. So 98 divided by 9.8 will give you 10 meters. So this means essentially that these 10 meters, well, you just lose them. So you need to get the tank 10 meters below in order to satisfy this friction. Okay. I personally prefer HF to, uh, because I use the mechanical energy equations in units of joules per kilogram. But if you started using it in units of uh, length, for example, meter or feet, you will probably like more this HL concept. Okay, let's just do a very quick analysis on velocity. So let me show you. If velocity increases, what will happen? Well, you know that this friction factor is dependent on Reynolds number and this relative roughness, okay? So, if the velocity increases, Reynolds number increases, which normally means that the friction factor increases. So this guy right here increases, and Obviously, this square head increases. So, we are going to increase the friction loss. Okay. Uh, but, there's a very interesting concept. If the velocity increases, this is to the square guy. So, actually, if you ask me, I think this is way more because this will maybe, I don't know, increase this to from 0 0.2 to maybe 0 0.02 whereas for example if I had 1 meter per second and I change it to 3 meter per second I will have 9 so we had here just a 10% increase but we got here an increase on 9 times the previous value so if you tell me what should I pay more attention is in the velocity head right here okay so just keep that in mind that you don't need to bother that much in the friction factor the actual increase is due to this velocity. Typical values of F are between here and typical values. Actually, what we we're going to use is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.03. This is the typical value we're going to encounter in many applications. So you could say this is right here. So if you had one velocity, let's say 0 0.01, and you increase the velocity, you will only have an increase on three times that, okay? 
but that velocity to the square will be probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or maybe even 50. So this was only three times, but right now we have even, I don't know, 10 or 50 times. So always pay attention on the velocity head. So what, what velocity is commonly operated is between 0 and 10 meters per second. So if you tell me 10 to the second power will be 100, which is a lot compared if you were using, I don't know, maybe 1 meter to the second power will still be 1 meter. So if you increase from 1 meter to 10 meter per second, the speed will definitely be a chaos. And if you increase it right here, I'm pretty sure that you're going to increase maybe 10 or even 15 percent the friction factor. So this is the actual, let's say, issue. Okay, so just that, uh, keep that in mind and let's do some exercises. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friently interface. So, for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here. The pump block. And then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.